Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about jellyfish. We're going to be talking about how many kinds of jellyfish there are, how they came to be, how they move, and how their digestive system works. So now we're going to be talking about the evolution of jellyfish, how they came to be. So there's actually two versions that scientists have come up with. So in the first version, it says that jellyfish actually gained the ability to transition from a stationary animal or called a stationary polyp. Um, and it, which is attached by a stalk, so it's attached to the ground by a little stalk. Um, and they transitioned from that to a swimming adult jellyfish like the ones we know today. And during that transition, there's major changes in their nervous system, their muscles, and their weaponry. So in their nervous system, uh, it has to account for their new body and movements that it will be making. So it's going from, you know, that little uh, stalk that's attached to the ground, you know, not moving or going anywhere to going from a swimming adult jellyfish. So it's going to have to account for those new muscles that it needs to be swimming and all of that. And then, like I said, there's changes in the muscles. So muscles will arise that allow them to contract and create thrust for swimming. So like in the little bubble on the top, that's called the bell-shaped body, There, there's going to be muscles that help to contract and push it and create a thrust for swimming in, in the water. And their weaponry, which um, refers to their stinging cells, which are called the nidocytes. And in their life stages also, uh, so throughout their different life stages, their genome doesn't drastically change. Their genes basically stay the same. Um, so they can have that complex life history that they have and use those same genes. And they actually do use some of the same genes that are found in humans. And in the second version, so the phylum Cnidaria, which does include corals and sea anemones, um, they found that Cnidaria originally had a medusa or adult life stage. So meaning that corals and sea anemones lost the medusa life stage, and they were able to see that from looking at moon jellyfish genome and what they call like higher animals that showed similarities and was able to demonstrate that they lost that medusa life stage. So now we'll be talking about jellyfish in the class Cyphozoa, and in this class of jellyfish, most are actually made up of 99% water. And so jellyfish are sea lenterates, which are aquatic invertebrate animals, so aquatic animals that lack a backbone. And common characteristics of sea lenterates are that they have a bell-shaped body, so like that bubble that you usually see that are above the tentacles of jellyfish, and they're usually transparent, so they're see-through, and they also usually have tentacles. So, and you can also see them here labeled in the picture. You can see the bell-shaped body, the tentacles, and you can also, it shows that it's transparent as well. Now that we know the basic structure of a jellyfish, we can discuss how the jellyfish moves to catch their food. Jellyfish are what we consider to be free floaters. This means they are able to swim with the motion of the ocean. They open and close their bell-shaped bodies to help with the movement. As they open and close their bodies, their tentacles move too, which helps to push the jellyfish forward. They then wrap their tentacles around the prey and bring it closer to their bodies. Once the jellyfish has the prey wrapped around its tentacles, it releases a toxin. Now this toxin is able to stun the prey and make sure that the prey doesn't swim away. The jellyfish will then pull the prey closer and then eventually put it into their mouths. Once the prey is in the mouth of the jellyfish, then we move to the digestive tract. The digestive tract is a system in the body which helps with processing food. Jellyfish have a different digestive tract than we do. Jellyfish have an incomplete digestive tract. This means there are three key parts that the jellyfish simply do not have. This includes the intestines, which help digest water and minerals, the liver, which regulates blood levels, and the pancreas, which gives us enzymes to break down our food. Our bodies have these to help process food, however, jellyfish do not. Jellyfish do, however, have stomachs, where in the cells of the stomach, they produce digestive enzymes which helps to break down their food. The last step of the jellyfish digestion is the orifice, which is an opening in the body. Jellyfish only have one of these, which means that the food goes and exits the same hole of the body. Now, as we still learn about jellyfish, I will be talking about two different types of jellyfishes, but these are not the only two that exist. There are many different types of jellyfishes out there in the world. 
but for today I will tell you two different types. So these jellyfishes are found within the same order, meaning it's able to let us know that these jelly that these are jellyfishes and also that these jellyfishes seem like they're the same but are still different in some ways. And the jellyfishes I will tell tell you about are true jellyfishes that go by rhizostome, which is the name of their order. So as we see on the picture to the right is what one type of je true jellyfish looks like, since there are many different types of true jellyfishes out there. So this jellyfish has a bell-shaped body, as we see in the picture, and they're very colorful. Though should note that although they, they are not poisonous, they do still have a painful sting, so be careful. And interesting, the sting is caused by cells, which is named nematocytes. And these are so little that you can barely see them, but they help to catch their food and protect them from danger. Um, and they are considered to be Vigoria swimmers, so they always have a lot of energy. Sort of like us when we eat a lot of sugar, we're pumped up with energy, but they don't need to eat sugar. They always have a lot of energy. With these jellyfishes, they are bottom dwellers. Does anyone know what that means? This means that they live near the bottom of the ocean. How cool is that? Following, they are filter feeders. So filter feeders are basically that they eat their food a few bites at a time. It's not like us where we'll probably consume a whole slice of pizza in one bite. They take their time and eat bits of their food at a time. They also have oral arms that extend down and are joined together with their mouth. And their mouth are also found in the middle of their stomach. Now, another true jellyfish would be the Cassiopeia, which is their scientific name. A name that is given to them to let us know that they are different from the other jellyfish, but are still considered to be a true jellyfish, like the one I showed before. They are still within the same order, which is the rhizostome, but have a different name, which is the scientific name. <laughs> and these jellyfishes are known to be upside down jellyfishes. As we see in the gif below, that is how they look like in the ocean. You see it's blobbing down and its arms facing up. That is what makes it an upside down jellyfish. These jellyfishes are actually not really poisonous, but they do still sting. And now, looking to the picture on to the right, when, we, when looking down on them, they can look like a flower, which we can see right here. And I found this to be really interesting, and I hope you found it to be really interesting as well. It looks pretty with the colors as well. So, as we see more of this jellyfish, we know that they have four to six short branches projecting from the sides of their mouths. As well, they have many mouths. They don't only have one. All these other mouths are found on their tentacles, which are actually connected to their stomach as well. And with these tentacles, there are stored algae. The algae is able to give them the colors that you see in the picture. The blue, that's algae. So remember how, you know, in the image I said, that's what makes them look like flowers? Well, you know, the color there is algae. Isn't that cool? Now what makes this more cool is that the tentacles are facing up at the sun and are taking care of the algae. This is able to help photosynthesize the algae, meaning it's giving them sunlight, which is what algae wants. And it creates a good friendship with the jellyfish, because even then, since the jellyfish is helping the algae, you know, helping it, you know, keeping it in its tentacles and providing the sunlight, the algae is able to help provide food and nutrients to the jellyfish. So, creating a great friendship. And speaking about food, a fun fact is that these upside down jellyfishes can grow up to be the size of a pie plate, which doesn't seem so big thinking about it, but if you really look at a pie plate, 
it's pretty bigger than expected. So now this concludes our presentation regarding jellyfishes. Next slide, we would like to now bring up our activity, which is a jellyfish activity. In this activity, you are guessing which jellyfishes are harmless or venomous. I hope you all enjoyed this activity and enjoyed the presentation. Thank you so much.